and welcome back to Tales from Kazalore, The Golden Era, Episode 9. How are we all feeling, players? Pretty crabby, oh. Nathan. <laughs> Pretty like I almost died. <laughs> Things could have gone a like... lot worse than they did. <laughs> That's... That is... I mean... Our NPCs are gone. That's worrying at the very least. That is a yeah. little worrying. Which reminds yeah, me. Yeah, I almost lost my character and my backup character in just a one go. One, one fell swoop, <laughs> one pinch uh. of the claw. Uh, which reminds me last episode, after two months of investigation and research, our players were finally tasked with meeting up with the Warlord Assembly. Through a series of convincing planning from Baina, blackmail from Argy, and bargaining from Winnie, the headliners were able to secure their next mission as one that sends them deep into the depths of Atraria, headed to the coastal city of Avalarium. The goal on paper, is to do investigative research on Fertala the Grimshar and her supercharging crystals. But the real goal is to find, and by any means necessary, bring home the Kazalorian spy Forget-Me-Not, which we now know their first name is Cory. As a reminder, Baina received a crystal from Forget-Me-Not in episode one, and he was told if it ever lit up, they were in danger and it's been lit for two months now. Not only did the headliners get the mission they wanted, but Winnie also brokered a deal. One way or another, this will be the headliners' last mission. If they succeed, anybody on the headliner squad that wants to gets to retire early. The only trade-off being that they have to become outspoken supporters of the Masmus for the rest of their days. If they fail, well, if they fail, the headliners all die. So, after a quick pit stop to commit a crime at Solomon Scantilla's childhood home and talking with his naked hermit father, we learn that Solomon ran away after failing at the tryouts and was never seen again. And we assumed he was picked up by Sanctuary. Afterwards, the headliner set sail and made it about two thirds of the way up the Sanguine Sea before being attacked by a horde of Kragalos, giant psychic crabs. This encounter almost ended horribly, but everyone lived. Some even gained new powers. Ah, uh, Argy. Except in the heat of the moment, through the battle and the torrential downpour of a storm, Highblade Vera and Splat disappeared into the night without a trace, and all but two horses had been eaten by the Kragalos. We rolled for that number backstage on the Patreon, by the way. And now, in the middle of the night, with their original plans completely uprooted and their comrades missing, we will pick up right where we left off. You know, I forgot we had two horses, so that's a good a good little up point to start the episode on. It's a better better position than I thought we were going into. Better position, but still not ideal. We literally uh, last left off where Baina, you investigated the sand by the trees and found yeah, no tracks. tracks. So they literally disappeared without a trace. That is where we are. Uh, most of you were woken from your slumber during this time, it is the middle of the night. It is stormy and rainy. What are we doing? Oh boy. Um, how? This this may be a, a nothing, but if if they are fairies that are the kidnappers here, which is I know a thing that we pitched last episode as a possibility, they can fly. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. How tall are the trees in this area? How how? quick would it be for me to get up to the top of a tree and see if I can spot any trace up there? Trees in this Especially area are oil. so fucking tall. These are not hence, normal trees. Hence why I asked. They are they are like a bunch of Empire State Buildings sitting around. It, it, okay. Like, they're, not that. <laughs> they're tall. 
Um, it seems the the flora is a little bit different in Atraria than back home. Okay, cool. We got we got megaflora. I sh should not be surprised in the slightest, but uh, ooh boy. Okay. Um, did did Winnie talk to the nearby plants at the end of last episode? I don't believe that no. it happened yet. No, not yet. And no, that that's probably our that's yet. probably our number one play. We we did also notably steal a crab claw um yes for food i i saw somebody uh in the community say that vena is going to turn that into a prosthetic if anyone loses an arm which may would be sure why not we'll see what i have to roll to convince nathan to let me do that <laughs> um but yeah uh, i think winnie do do your cool thing all uh, right so i'm gonna plug my my hair plants into the environment here and say hey so anyone notice any beings two beings um humanoid come through here recently please um you use your wild sight ability you search for two humanoids you find nothing not within a mile radius. Okay, not within. They had not come in this area any time, any, rec any recently at all. No, no plan has seen one. Are you are you asking for the location? <laughs> are you trying to find like Vera and Splat, or what exactly are you asking? I'm looking for Vera and Splat, so I'm assuming at least two humanoids would come have come through here but i think it says it can and you can interpret physical sensations so including vibrations footsteps and temperature i would assume body heat would be considered temperature Body heat uh, could be considered temperature but it's also like science like <laughs> <laughs> How? Because uh, I, I know for a fact Splat is barefoot, so if you, at least his. Um, if you are asking for that, you you find nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, also, Momo, oh, do you know your camera's blocked right now? Yes, okay. I have to also do something for work. I forgot to do before I left. So that is I'm okay. Doing it Just right making now. sure you knew. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that does not that that line of questioning does not turn up anything. Hmm. Okay, um, I don't know if this is going to get anything either, but it's an idea that popped into mind. I, I have tools for whatever you know crafting I need to do, including arcana crafting. I can make any tools that I need if given time as well. Can I roll an arcana check to like look around for any sort of magical energies or signatures or residue or anything similar to what we saw? near Lone Shire. Is this like a weird portal thing? I feel like it's probably sure, not. I was about to say that's the same worth, thing. That's worth <laughs> yeah, checking. Yeah, give me an Arcana check for sure. Okay. Or nature check, um, whichever. It kind of goes hand in hand uh, in this world. They are the same for me. Can I? Uh, no? Sure. Okay, yeah. cool. So, uh, I guess we'll, we'll say, I mean, Arcana, nature, whichever, they're the same stat. Uh, with advantage for the help action, uh, that is a 16 on the first, and okay, 16 is the best. Uh, I don't have any flash of genius at the moment, so 16 is gonna have to be where that stays. Uh, but that's not her bad. You do not seem to notice any sort of portals. Okay. Like the one at Lone Shire, no. To be honest, this is probably a good thing. I feel like that it would be nice to know, but that's also like a very bad bad option uh, is there any is there anything we know about okay here's another kind of bullshit question i acknowledge but do do fairies have a sort of magical signature that i could look mm. for i don't know how like i know the fairies here aren't as like fey wild trippy as they are in a lot of other well, settings fairies are magical beings they they don't follow basic anatomy. Some of them do have sort of mystical abilities. Um, whether that's something you can trace and track, that's uh, that's another question. Um, 
it would that that that's more like down to like hunting. That would definitely be. Could I? If I make a decent case for the at least area or like way of thinking, could you let me make a roll for? I am willing. To, I am. I am open court hearing. Any any pleas for checks? Fairies aren't like super small creatures. They're not like birds. You know, they're sort of. No, they're like uh, three feet tall. Human. So, yeah. So if they're flying, they're either flying above the trees, which I don't know why they would be, or they're flying through the trees. So if we could track sort of a path of uh, brush that isn't super thick, that is fly, that they're able to fly through, mm. maybe we can start to get on a decent path to where fairies might be. Yeah, that is a decent line of thinking. Uh, what kind of check would you want to make for that? God, I don't even know. <laughs> um, I would say I, I'm, I would say nature or survival. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever this is, I will help. Action it. As whatever well. tracking. This is basically like tracking animals for hunting, right? Which feels uh, more like survival my, to me. Yeah. My nature my is plus three, which isn't terrible. But if anyone has anything better, I do have a plus girl. six to it. I think I uh, also have a plus six to it. Then I can give. Then I'll just give one of you a help action, and you could do the roll. Uh, hey, let's. If Nathan will allow, let's both. I would do, say I survival, mean, by the way, not nature. Oh, my survival oh, is I, my survival is a whole plus you, one. Well, if my survival okay. is a minus one. Um, yeah, my survival guys, is also Guys, we're gonna do great one. in the wilderness survival episode. I have so much faith uh, in that. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. nature as well. Um, um, what was yours, Momo? My survival is also plus one. My nature okay. is well, actually I mean, plus four, not plus six. <laughs> um, I mean, you can still make the check. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna I make just, the check. Yeah, uh, well, with yeah. help action with from RG, I'm yep, assuming. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Yep. That was a nat one, so well, thank God RG's helping. Uh, that landed cocked. So that's a second one. <laughs> Damn. Double that one. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up. Anyone else have any ideas? Yeah, no, that that leads. Uh, you look at the trees. You look at the openings. You're like, man, they could really go anywhere, huh? Uh, OK. Um, um, I usually wear my shoes at all times. Do I have any inclination that taking them off and being closer to nature would benefit us in any way, shape, or form. I mean, the things you could do with your toes is the same the things you could do with your hands. Yeah. You know, you got you had to try. You had you to, to try. try. Don't go crying to God now. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is the exact time to go cry to God. Yeah. I guess... It, well, we can't find them if we're half dead, so... That is true. Uh, Lexi is currently... Uh, he's wrangled up the two horses that you do have. Um, mm. And everyone's just kind of... standing around. Mm. Yeah. Who um, are our two healthiest people? Almost certainly me. I, I only took, well, like, I one hit. I, uh, All right. Arya so don't if took any damage, actually. My my sheet says I'm at 37. Did I? I don't even remember taking a hit in the last fight. Was that old? Uh, I'll trust the 37 if I forgot to put it back up after something. Uh, uh, but I think that does still put me at almost certainly one of the healthiest. So if Baina and Ari want to go on a little scouting trip to see if they can get any more leads on fairies the rest yeah. of us can set up camp and at least get a short rest <laughs> uh sure. i'm fine with that we definitely could the crabs are still on the ship the right are, the ship is being picked apart it's but like, yeah. like it's, so, not, it's not point, an option point no, no no i'm not saying we're we want to go back to the ship i'm saying we might not want to make camp and sleep on the beach where we're within view of them yes and ari ari took zero damage in the last fight, by the way. So Ari okay, yeah. is a perfect Bain, health. Bain on Ari mission. That hasn't happened yet. We'll do that. Cool. So I assume you guys sort of head into 
the, the, the wilderness a little bit to get away from the beach, find a nice place to set up camp. Um, yeah, kind of, I guess, like, on the sort of side of the battlefield where Splat and Vera were, because they were next to each other. Um, yeah, I you... Going the opposite direction. You find um, a nice little area with, like, a, 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 a pond... Uh, and some nice flat ground to like set up a tent. Um, I actually have artwork for a little campsite here. Uh, oh. oh, almost. Oh. Almost have artwork for a little campsite here. I love, I'm very excited to see this because I love the idea of a nice little pond in already established mega flora filled Atraria. So like okay that that's that's bigger than I was saying I was like is this a is this a puddle for giants <laughs> what kind of pond are we talking uh, about here this, I mean this might be a puddle but for all intents and purposes this is a pond for you um, oh that's a tree in the background isn't it dang correct. I thought that was a mountain that is a tree root that's a tree that is a tree okay cool um, so you find so a nice little tiny. spot to post up um, the gang can do that again it's a dark and stormy night visibility is low. Uh, I do have um, dark vision goggles for what that's worth when we go on scouting mission. For sure. So if you and Arya want to head out, um, I would just say, I, I mean, it would be down to a check. All right. It'd be down to a check. Um, I'm hoping nature, but maybe survival. What well, are, it what depends are we on what you're looking for. Because if you're trying to track fairies through trees, that's survival. If you're trying to... Um, you know, do something more. It depends. Oh, wait. Possibly important question here. Where's Spud? I remember that we, we established... We, we established yeah. that he's here. Yeah, Spud he, is with the gang. Spud came back. He, okay, I was just, I know we established he was separate. With Winnie. Okay. Um, Can we can we take Spud? Can we take Spud on this scouting mission? I mean, yeah, why not? Um, okay. He's sort of trained for this. He's going to want to find yeah. boss. He's dropping... Yeah. I'm dropping flowers as we go, um, mostly so that they can alert us to any danger coming our way. I basically give the instructions, if you see or sense any humanoids that are not us or any giants that are clearly not us, please give a little whisper. Okay. Here, here's what I'm thinking, and this is kind of wild and an, an unrefined idea, but Bane is a scientist, we're approaching this scientific method and we're going to iterate on it, right? Uh -huh. Splat has, like, a lot of nature magic stuff he's on the, his the person, most religious of the group, he's, for sure. He's, he's the most religious of the group. I believe he is blessed. He is a yeah. healer, so he's going to have nature magic stuff on him. Splat is going to... Or not Splat. Spud is obviously going to be very used to that. He's a creature of the wild. Okay, yeah. I'm wondering if we can sort of combine... This, this will be a... A ridiculous artificer bullshit check, but I do have an ability called <laughs> something. Where is it? Uh, the right tool for the job. Uh, with thieves tools or artisans tools in hand, which I have, I can magically create one set of artisans tools. Now, there are non-magical artisans tools, but I'm wondering, can I fashion some sort of, like, splat detector for spud? Yeah. Can we, can um, we use, like, get a, a magical signature where it's like spud can track splat and i can like amplify that so we can he can lock on to something cool roll on that 20 and you got it i'm gonna try roll on that 20 <laughs> and you can track a human's dna sure that was the third one in a row <laughs> oh my god you're not gonna roll a one anymore you got all of them out don't got all of them out. fucking say that wow. you're gonna jinx it Incredible. Incredible. Remember work. that one episode you rolled all of us like rolled nine nat ones each? That was crazy. <laughs> um uh, yeah, no. Okay, so that that oh someone in chat said get new dice. That was a different one. No. That was that was actually the one that Nathan sent me for Bayna specifically, so I'm blaming him. You uh okay, well at least that wasn't my normal check. Uh screw it. Nature check. Let's, let's go. All right, normal. I guess I didn't say what I was actually like trying to, to track. Yeah. That said, I like. I'm trying to. I mean, I I am trying to look for, for that like sort of, arcane magic that I know probably wouldn't be, normal for a Traria because if the the nature is very different here, yeah, just from the biome being different, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 
any nature magic that Splat has on his person especially is probably going to have a bit of a different aura than everything else around because he's always lived in Kazlor and that's a very different biome. So I'm looking for something that's sort of unnatural to the, the environment of the wild with my okay. magical knowledge. Nature check, please, Give for the love Arcana of God. Give me if you're doing magic. Oh, it's a plus six either way. Um, that's a 23. A 23. Okay. There we go. Where are you? Where are you? How are you going about searching? Uh, so, honestly, what I'm probably, what he's probably doing, we've established Bana has various crystals and magical tools on his person. Like, he definitely has some sort of, like, I, I, I know the detector thing was bullshit, but, like, he has artificer tools on his person that can, like, detect enchantments and make stuff work. Those are probably resonating differently. So I'm trying to see, like, can I follow a trail of, like, familiar signatures that aren't as... Basically, he's looking for something familiar in the very different magical environment that I could hopefully track. A 23 is a very good roll. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. With a 23, mm -hmm. if you go back to the edge of the forest where okay. Vera and Splat were last seen... You will find, however Vena does this, traces of um, crystal magic. You do not traces find. Of you do not of find crystal a crystal magic. Specifically. You do not find a trail to follow. Okay, but that's you find traces though. of crystal magic in the spot where they were that's, last seen. That's were really they banned? He's got like his wand with like the different colors that light up depending. He's like metal detecting the beach. Uh, Okay, that's... I think they might have been bamfed away. I think maybe that that's the only other explanation. What There's does that no... mean? Bamfed? It's, it's a, you know, that like is night a Nightcrawler night reference, thing? which is not oh. what I was expecting. Oh, see, that's I know the that sound effect like when, when Nightcrawler... I didn't know his signature sound was bamf. His, his, his signature thing, it's always, rep it's always spelled B-A-M-F. That's the, Got it. the Nightcrawler teleport sound. Yeah, like they pop in and then popped out of existence, essentially teleported... Okay, mm. that, well, I don't know how to, I, I can't track teleport, uh, hmm. Hmm, that's all I mean, you know, first things first, just so that we establish everybody has this, gotta go back to the camp, report. Uh, right. boy, <sighs> we, we're not in a great place here, gang. No, we're not. Not in a great no, place. No, we are not. Um, okay. Are we cooking up a late night snack, or are we going to bed? We're cooking. Um, yeah, we have we have the crab meat. Let's go ahead and cook that while we can. Sweet. Uh, All right. Chef... I gather up some leaves and herbs. Chef Lexi and Chef Winnie are on the case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they they find a nice dry spot under some cover to create a little campfire. Get some crab meat cooking. Mm -hmm. Momo, if you have a meal in mind, go ahead. I know you love crab. I did not do my due diligence and like research. A crab that could be made in the woods. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. <laughs> no crab so, rangoon. I'm assuming <laughs> there's like a bunch of like maybe like herbs like thyme and absolutely not basil in this environment. Like thyme of uh, I don't know. I'm sure you sage. could probably maybe find some eggs too if you went hunting. Maybe make a. I omelet. don't think that's a thing. There is no yeah. fucking way there are. There are chickens. <laughs> I never said chicken eggs, chickens. but eggs of some kind. <laughs> oh, I just thought like eggs and Great idea, Nathan. Chicken. We're in the wilderness in a place that we don't know anything about. There's an egg over there. Let me just put that in my mouth. Take it. Yeah. Hey, Nathan, a that's how the stuff. alien movies happen. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you're obviously trying to sick a preacher on us by getting you want us some to eggs. eggs. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who, me? No. Cross that off my list. Um, all right, moving uh, on. We make some crab. Yeah, it, it <laughs> smells amazing though, for sure. Mm. Um, incredible. Give me, give me just a cooking check. Just a, just a I'm cooking, cooking check. check. Just, like, a, just please, roll a three twenty, and that's how good this meal is. You can please roll cook it advantage. very well, because I'm still, I'm still worried about the possibility of these confirmed psychic crabs having some sort of psychedelic effect in their meat. Okay. Um, <laughs> please do I have please cook off any chemicals no, that may be inside that. You get advantage. Just a flat D20. You get advantage. advantage. Okay. Yeah. 
After the day we've had, who says that's a bad thing? All right, we're going to go with a 13. 13. It's pretty good. It's pretty it's good. Pretty good. Yeah. It Above is average. pretty good. Um, yeah. And you all sort of chow down on some crab meat. It doesn't give you psychosis. Um, Thank God. Or anything crazy like that. It's actually quite delicious. Yeah. Uh, nice. Need salt. I try to feed but, them to the uh, horses. I'm not sure if they can eat meat. It's like, <laughs> do horses, can horses eat this? They I imagine eat it. it's not going to hurt them. They'll, they'll eat what you give them. All right. I don't know how horses sound when they eat. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, and there's a, a moment here for, for role play if you want to have conversations with people. I know, I? RG, you just experienced a second life. By the way, we flashed through that on the episode, but you experienced that in real time. So you mm. lived through like 70 years of a life. And just got ripped back Jeez. into this, and it feels like a dream. Um, how is that affecting RG, if at all? Plus, you died. You should have died, but a new yeah, sort of I gotta... thing happened to you, didn't it? RG, he's seen visions, horrifying, terrible nightmares that it feels like you'll never wake up from. That's his training regimen, <laughs> a la his sister. Yeah. Um,. So the near-death experience really uh, got him a lot more shaken than that, I would think. Mm. Um, and RG is kind of keeping to himself, sort of like, not picking, but like sort of tugging at the mushroom at the uh, in his neck now. Yeah. This huge, thick stem. Yeah, it's a like, beefy oh, one, too. Yeah. Uh, sprouted what are you zero doing? Zero HP. Mm? What are you doing? Oh, <sighs> trying to, I don't know, like soften this up before I gotta pull it out. Uh, let's see. Turn around. RG cautiously turns around and lowers his hands. <laughs> You see, does it look like it's fully coming out of his neck? Oh like yeah, it's a, it is his neck. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. It's like if his neck was the dirt, the mushroom is in it. You know what I mean? Um, and mm. it's it's fully sprouted out of him. It's probably like this thick at the stem, and so Oof. it's uh it's right there in there at the base. It's not very tall. It's probably only like this tall. Um, it goes into his hair a little bit, kind of pushes it aside, um, but it's there. It's blue. Um. Is it like, does it hurt? It's more like it's just like, it's uncomfortable. Like you can almost feel it embedded a little bit. Oh, this is so much worse than the other ones. Uh, RG, I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't think that's coming out. It, no, it, it's, it'll suck, but it'll come out. Uh, Think about it's how my other powers work. Some spores get embedded in the arms or other parts of the body, and you just kind of afterward got to pick them out. Um, it's not pleasant. This, this one sort of it it's in there. It's it's really in there, like really in there. Yeah, no, I really don't know how I'm going to get it out. That's a very vital part of my body, too, that is kind of in. Yeah. I mean, I'm sort of like a plant girl, mm -hmm. but you know what they say about, like, fungus? How, like, you might see it at the top of some things, but its roots actually go way deeper Yes. My concern is that this is sort of in your spine. Hmm. That's a very... That is a valid and terrifying concern. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay, maybe don't either. try to pull out your spine. Well, I assume I would stop before I rip my spine out. 
I was fully planning to pull it though, so. Yeah, mm hmm. So I don't think you should. Or at least wait until we find um, sp uh, Splat. Actually, can I do a medicine check on him to see how yeah. deep that thing is? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Give me a medicine yeah. check. All right. Yeah, that's a uh, 22. 22? Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this thing's in there, man. I wouldn't recommend pulling on it. I would, yeah. I would not recommend pulling on it. Your presumption that it seems to be attached to, if not his spine, it's definitely like using, using this, like he should have died. This mushroom mm -hmm. sprouted and he didn't. So if logical reasoning, if the mushroom somehow is the reason why he didn't die, then it's probably attached to something in his body important important to keep him alive mm -hmm. so yeah you don't pull that out um i think you might die if you do so learn to live in the discomfort it's like sort of a thing about being i think i heard i read that in the paper somewhere well that's it doesn't make me feel great winnie <laughs> It wasn't supposed to. That's the whole point. Like, living in the discomfort. Just it is what it is. Yeah, it's like sort of this... Mm. This new age, realistic, pessimistic view that is sort of going on during the war times. It's very popular among the youth. That is a damning indictment of our times, but it does make a sense. Well, I guess I'm a side sleeper now, man. I mean, back sleeping was still terrible for your posture. I have bad posture? RG fully like scoliosis. Like. Hmm. Uh, actually, ooh, I think I have to go. I think Lexi is calling me. <laughs> you might not be able to hear him, but I think that might be the mushroom, so... Yeah, sure. Gonna, He's not that far away, but yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> see ya. Okay, see ya. Don't pull it out. RG, like, self-consciously, like, adjusts his posture, like, oh, 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 jeez. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, Baina wants to talk to Winnie as well, actually. Hmm. Uh, because he hasn't had a chance to to say this yet, but as Winnie is, I'm assuming, hurriedly <laughs> leaving mm -hmm. uh, RG to deal with his mm -hmm. fungal problem, uh, Bane is going to kind of wave her over and be like, oh, Winnie, I didn't get a chance to say this in the uh, ensuing chaos, but mm -hmm. as your captain, commendations on figuring out the strategy of removing the claws from the crabs back there. That was a good strategic choice and, quite honestly, probably saved more than one of your squad mates. Oh, thank you. I mean, I was fully intending to eat it. Well, that's and I did. also a good strategic choice given the situation. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you don't particularly want to be here, and I know that does not specifically mean Atraria, so... I feel it's good to acknowledge your contributions when I can. Well, I thank you. Uh, he kind of looks over at Lexi. What is what is Lexi doing right now, for context? Lexi's eating. Lexi's, Lexi's just eating crap. He's still eating. going. He's, he's still, still going. going. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's just, he's just munching. Out. Just munching. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh... Baina, sort of knowing how awkward this question is, but asking regardless, because he's curious about the, you know, the state of his squad. Comes goes, how are things between you and Lexi currently? I, I don't, I, I don't understand the question. Good, normal as it, it would be in a situation as ours, squad mates. Mm-hmm. You said quite a few more words than were required there. When you, you are aware that I am aware of the situation between you two. To be clear, this is not me getting you in any sort of trouble. I'm just, as someone who was close to his squad mates during his time, I, I like to be aware of these sorts of things when I can. 
You were close to multiple squad mates? Not... That's not... You're, you're well aware that that's not particularly what I meant. Look, right now we are... He kind of trails off for a second. He goes, I've been put in an interesting situation with the new developments. I mean, I recently discovered that there was an entire member of my team whose relationship to myself is a mystery. It was completely unknown to me, to everyone else in the squad, and it's caused me to reevaluate my stance on interpersonal relationships between squad mates and he, he kind of continues rambling like this. You can tell that like now that there's time to rest in like a crisis situation, he's kind of thinking like this is this is weird and he's sort of using using talking to you as an excuse to think through his own shit. <laughs> it's like I feel like this conversation is going on much longer than it should. It's like <laughs> so you're giving your blessing for us to con continue being close squad mates and yes not that you necessarily require my blessing to be close with each other i just don't i'll i'll put it this way i'm aware of your relationship and i just want to express that it's good for for as strange as that might be coming from a superior officer, don't don't take your squad mates for granted. Appreciate the relationships you have with them, and I hope it continues to go well for you too. Thank you. Um, for what it's worth, it hasn't been as terrible as it probably could be being on your team in this squad. Well, thank you, Winnie. That does mean quite a bit. And I'm glad to have you here as well. So we have to get out of here so I can never see you again. In a good way. Understandably, yes. I, I would certainly hope you mean it in a good way. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, war is not the ideal circumstances, so... No, no, no. I, remind me. If we, did you tell everyone that it was you who sort of negotiated that deal? Uh, or is that not brought up to everyone? Right I don't up. think I, I said anything about I was, I was it. Gonna say, I think he can probably figure it out. We can out. retroactively say you did if you want to, but if you don't if, want anybody if not, to know, it's uh, choice. Like, I'll, I'll insight check. I can do an insight check to see if he knows. Uh, yeah. Whatever you and or Nathan say. I'm really not hiding it. You're, yeah, okay, so yeah, he definitely yeah. knows. <laughs> I'm aware that you were the one who negotiated that deal back at the Warlord Assembly. Yeah. And you're welcome. I fully assume that you plan to take it, of course. What do you plan to do with your time outside of the Masmus once we do successfully make it back? Literally anything else. Anything else. Um, well, I would be retired, technically, so move back to my home take care of my parents with Lexi of course we are not going to his hometown have you heard of it that place is a cult I think he might actually be a part of a cult it's okay though he is reformed um, I've overheard some conversations yes and mm -hmm. I, I have of course I found out about his hometown from the briefing they do have some odd policies over there but regardless move to a smaller town quiet with nature be close to nature in a different way not the way i was sort of forced to be and just have a nice quiet long life this is not for us i don't think there should be anyone really fighting this war this war has gone on long before us and it'll go on long after us. I don't know if there's a winning section of this war. I think there's just misery. It's a shame that there are not more people like you in charge of these things. Well, anyone that would be like me would literally never be here. <laughs> I suppose that is the nature of power, isn't it? Well, 
know that I will do my utmost to bring both you and Lexi back from this so that you can have that more simple life that you desire. It is what you deserve. Thank you. All right. Now, let's get some sleep and find our other squad mates, wherever they may be. Yes. Cool. Um, we will get to sleep shortly, but I also have some conversations I'd like to have with people. Um, uh, Sue Young is going to... By the way, he's still here. Don't forget. Sue Young... Um, is is truly um, in over his head it would appear he is soaking wet he is dirty and grimy um he does look excited though it seems like this is probably like the coolest sort of mission that he's probably ever been on so he is uh rivetingly excited uh and he will come up to Baina and just sort of start questioning um, Vayna about, like, so, Captain, any potential theories on the disappearances of your squad mates? Any idea where they went? You're asking me about my theories? I've waited years for someone to ask me about my theories. I would love to hear all about it. Uh, I mean, yeah, if he's at, like, he, it, Vayna now knows that it was something crystal-related, so, like, well, I, well... Matt, the player who does not know the intricacies of actual Kazalorian right. crystal enchanting, does not have specific things. Oh boy, Beta has theories. I've got. He whips out his notebook, <laughs> starts going. There's like diagrams and shit. None of it's good for news. I mean, like it's basically like a book of math equations. Like it's yeah, not yeah, good yeah. stuff. But like he's gonna start going until Suyang stops him. He, um. So you guys are occupied with that. He will write down everything you say. He seems just as excited about journaling all of this as you do about mm -hmm. telling somebody about all of this. Just a bunch uh, of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say at some point during this, more saying this just to establish it for later in case it comes back, like as Baina's kind of journaling all this stuff, he is making specific note of basically what we're actually officially on the books here to do. Like he is trying to sort of take note about how the flora and fauna of the wild would play into wild magic and how that might be different here. So he is actually like genuinely researching Atrarian magic as we're there. Yeah. If, if not for the official reasoning, but for autism special interest, but whoa boy, we're, sure. we're getting that info as well. <laughs> um, while that's happening at some point in the night before we go to sleep, I think Ari will approach Archie uh, for the first time in some time. Um, RG is doing a back bend over a rock, clearly <laughs> still fixating on the posture comment. <laughs> oh, man, um, I guess I do really. <laughs> hey. Oh, uh, hey. You almost died out there. Yes, I did. And RG comes up from his back bend, sits by the rock. How'd that feel? Not great. There's a mushroom in the base of my neck now, and I don't know if this one comes out or goes away. So mm -hmm. a new, it's a little stressful. A new thing with your gift? Guess so. Can I see? RG turns around and shows it to her. Oof. Yeah, that is not like the other ones. No, it is not. It is really in there. Really in there and really big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't pull on that. Who knows how it works? New powers. Must, yeah. must kind of feel good though like you were going to die and mother nature said no I still need you if that's how you want to say it I guess it's hard to believe I really was yeah 
I don't know if you're some kind of optimist or something. It's kind of weird to go on the silver lining defense of the time I almost died. No, I'm not an optimist. I guess I'm just confident, at least in my own abilities. And I know you're probably freaking out about it, so trying to maybe ease your mind a little. Well, I appreciate the effort, I guess, but I don't know. I'm worried about it. What if I just have this thing in the back of my neck now, and if you pull it out, I'm gone. So. I guess time will tell. Um. Are you thinking of, after all this, when this mission is over, assuming we live, you're going to take up the deal? Of course I'm going to take up the deal. It's my whole thing. Yeah, that's good. I was going to tell you you should. And what are you going to do with it? I'll probably stay in. Why? Become a captain, climb the ranks. But why do you want to climb these ranks? I mean, is this really where you want to be? You enjoy war and being in the Masmus? I'm good at it. Well, sure, anyone can be good at something, but if they don't enjoy it, why would they spend their life doing it? And I would say I enjoy it to a degree. The same way one enjoys being good at anything. But you could be good at anything, Ari. You're talented, you're smart, you're perceptive, you know? You could go into other fields and be good at them, and maybe you'd like them. And it's not fair that you haven't had the chance to explore that. Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, maybe. You might be right. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. This is all I know. I'd really hate you see to die... I'd really hate to see you die here. In the Masmus. I mean, I don't know how your power is going to evolve, but I don't think you get one of these. So... Can you imagine if I went on some island in Atraria? A month away from possible retirement? I don't know, I guess... I never told you this, RG, but... Every time I use my gift on somebody... It also gets used on me. Oh. And... In the beginning, when I saw my visions, I saw visions of myself dying horribly. But, um, yeah, now my visions are a little bit more abstract than that. I guess I just, my biggest fear isn't dying. It's not achieving everything that I know I can. I think I can make a difference in this war. Grandpa thinks I can make a difference in this war, and I know what you think about Grandpa. I'm not here to talk about that, but I believe him, and he believes in me, and the last thing I'd ever want to do is quit. It's not quitting. you It's earned retirement. I mean, we've done more than most squads have done in the few years we've been active. We wouldn't have this deal otherwise. Ah, but that's one thing we both learned from Grandpa, is the goalpost moves, doesn't it? Then stop playing his game. It doesn't matter to me if he moves the goalposts anymore. I'm on a different field. And I'm happy for you, 
And I hope you have success in, you know, journalism or politics or whatever you want to get into. But this is, this is... I can't imagine who I am without the Masmus. You know, you're not the only one who has seen or experiences nightmares, and I appreciate that your experience would be a lot more frequent and a lot more intense, but you can't live listening to those terrible voices in your head. Everyone has them. I have them. You think I wasn't terrified of breaking Grandpa's will and going out on my own? You think I didn't have night terrors thinking it was going to backfire? And thank goodness it di didn't, but if it didn't, I couldn't stand listening to those nagging voices in my head telling me I was worthless because they weren't even my own. I know you think you want this, but I want you to really think about it. No grandpa, no family, nothing. How would you feel about yourself? About what you've accomplished? I said some really shitty things about your ability. That was petty of me. And I don't have an option of you to stand by them. But we're a high fucking standard, Ari, and you're fantastic compared to everyone else in this country on this planet. It's not fucking fair that you still feel so bad about yourself. Yeah, well... What does Winnie always say? It is what it is. Whether you think this is Grandpa's fault or not, I'm the one moving the goalpost all the time. I'm the one telling myself that I can do more. I'm the one that believes that I can do more. And if that was instilled from me from a young age, well, I'm not self-reflective enough to dig into that. But it's the truth. It's where we are. And it sets out a pretty clear path of where I'm headed. And I would much rather walk that path with you. But clearly, clearly we have different wants out of life. Well, I respect that you're not trying to get me to do something I don't want to do. Just don't die out there. You're about a couple weeks away from retirement. Stay alive. You need to lead the army on your philosophy of learned helplessness. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. And unless anybody has any other conversations they want to have... We can move on. Man, every conversation between RG and Ari, 10 out of 10. There's <laughs> not been one that was not a banger. <laughs> banger, banger, banger. Um, okay, you all go to sleep. Um, and we wake up uh, in the morning. The rain has stopped. Um, it smells oh. like petrichor and... Uh, mildew and it is quite gorgeous here in the Atrarian wild forest um, massive trees all surrounding you you all I assume no. gather around and discuss what the plan is <laughs> yeah, no uh, words from have... my, my flowers that were keeping watch no, no words, words from your flowers of any sort of giants approaching or any humanoids approaching of any kind to be to be clear, have we longly rested? You have all Please long have... rested. Okay. Mm. Oh. And does RG still have the mushroom in his neck? So, if you uh, check your mushroom the next day, it feels a little bit smaller. Oh. Good. Progress. Just a little bit. Oh, it's like a hemorrhoid good. for your neck. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that you said that, my, Benny. My mood like... on this ability was like down, up, and then Momo made it down again. 
<laughs> Does Winnie say well, that to RG? Is that not what hemorrhoids do? They <laughs> pop out and then they go back in after a while. Guys, Are every single person just left the Twitch neck. stream. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's getting a little bit smaller. Um, okay. Potentially, it will keep getting smaller. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, you all sort of gather around as you're breaking camp. Lexi's got the two horses. All right, Cap. What's the plan? Yeah, I think this kind of goes without saying, because I feel like you definitely would have uh, told us. But can I do another nature check just to see if there's anything different in the area nothing. not even necessarily there's for... nothing different in the area from, okay, from okay. the night before and, okay. and if there um, was any sort of clues of any kind they probably got washed away overnight uh okay How, is everyone so have... is everyone up to date on your teleportation theory uh yeah any any information that uh Baina has would have been shared um, we have at the moment five people, correct? You, is it is it five? Um, it's us three, Lexi and uh, Ari. You also and have Sue it. Young oh, and Sue Spud. Young. So we have six. Are the horses big enough to fit three people on each? I don't. Well, we said are yes. Are they Because like I think yeah. Clydesdales are like war horses. We said yes. At, we we, okay. we allowed maximum three when we were at the Battle at Nunez Estate. Um, but okay. I will say loading up three people on your two horses might slow down their ability to travel. Yeah. Uh, my, my question basically being, if we have three people on each horse from where I think we are, and I can do, uh, I, it would probably be a survival check, so I might need help, but like whatever check I need to figure out our position, roughly how far away are we from Avalarium right now? You are, uh, I just measured this out recently. Um, let me briefly check the map just to give you an estimate. Uh, I just looked up Clydesdale horses for like human scale. They're so big, they <laughs> dwarf a regular horse. But then oh, yeah. there's a picture of Shrak next to a Clydesdale and it looks like a normal horse. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, you are easily, I'd say, 120 miles ish away oh, wow. from Okay, Adelaide. so that's. I didn't mean days in theater time which i guess i should have been more clear on uh given given the rough terrain given horses that are going to be kind of overloaded i i heavily expect that this is not going to be a super fast journey but roughly how long are we, are we um thinking? okay so hypothetically um let's see here how far can a horse travel in a day uh, we'll say on the low end, 20 miles in a day. Um, since your horses are overloaded. So oh, that would be six, six days. Like a, like a week. Six days. Urgh, I don't like that, but I also don't really know what other option we have. Is, um, is, does it even change if some of us walk sometimes? Or is it still the same amount of time? I, I mean, you still have to be able to keep up with the horses so they can't get yeah. too too far ahead. Even if the horses are going faster, then we're, yeah, you then know, we're only, as, only as fast as the slowest member. Um, how yeah. high do I have to roll athletics to run as fast as a Clyde? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, for six this, days. <laughs> now, yeah. we're not going to do this, mostly because this would probably derail the entire campaign but just out of curiosity i heavily assume that it would be a much farther journey to return oh yeah yeah, yeah much we farther got two thirds return. of the way so it would you're be far, far away worse. from Adam, all right Adam, you're even farther away from from home home turf here great so as unfortunate as it might be i think we just gotta we just gotta set set off and uh, something that I think Spud said that was really strange is that he couldn't smell Splat at all, right? Yeah, that's something yeah. you said, correct. The, if yeah. if we're thinking teleportation, we're not going to find it. Not here. Yeah, uh, it has to be teleportation, because so... I think dogs can smell as far as like three miles. 
So right. there's no way he traveled three miles. Even if they were flying, and, they couldn't do three miles in less than a minute. Right. The, the if we want to... That... Yeah, go ahead. If we want to try another sort of reasoning mm -hmm. bit, if we assume that they're not, like, magically, like, hiding their senses, we could assume that they're hiding in an area with, like, very... What's the word? Odorous... Uh, like a stinky mm. place? Plants. <laughs> A stinky place or like uh, spices that smell very strongly, flowers right. that flora yeah. that smell, smell very strongly and would like. But mask even then, scent. the most likely thing that would cause that would be plants. And if they were within a decent radius of us, masked by yeah. plants, when you should be able to find them. I, I think we awesome. I think we have to go. If there's traces yeah, of crystal magic, oh, annoyingly, we know that the center of well. Maybe no is a strong word, given that we don't know much about Atreria, but from our understanding, from our understanding, Avalarium is like probably some sort of center of, of enchantment research. So right. we might be going the right way anyway. Um, I think we just got to go. I think even if this slows us down a little bit, uh, we're, we should stick to more densely forested areas like if they're obviously we shouldn't go along paths we should stick to stick to the forest especially because with our like we use our size to our advantage right use the size to our advantage stay in densely forested areas that's going to prevent giants from jumping us yeah. uh so unless anyone has any objections that's bane's official plan start going stick to forested areas yeah i'm still like dropping my flowers for some sort of surveillance. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's um, a good I, idea. I'm also there's changing no way the type of flower, so that. it's not like I'm changing the type of flower as well, so it's not just like a clear trail of this flower well, is honest, exactly where they went. Honestly, I don't hate the idea of making a somewhat obvious trail because okay. a a trail like if they are still in the area, having a path for them to follow isn't the worst plan. Okay, and then. I do yeah. think it's going to be hard for a giant to notice, like, oh, here's one out of place flower every like certain distance because that's it's a human scale flower, okay. so those are going to be yeah. real it's tough to notice. Like, would you notice a trail of ants? You know, uh, probably. Uh, okay, <laughs> in my house, a, tra a trail of ants spread out at like tracking scale, not like a line of ants. <laughs> in a forest probably probably dropping like magnolias or gardenias just because i think that flower is pretty yeah for sure um okay i i think we should probably move during the day i know night is stealthier but since we don't know the environment visibility is probably going to be good for us yeah um so with with you know counting what blessings you do have and coming up with what plan you can, uh, you begin to head out into the unknown wilderness of Atraria. Um, Winnie, something very large is headed your way. Okay. Oh, panic. Ooh, we should panic. Uh, ooh, uh, direction and size. Direction size. In front of you, headed directly towards you, huge. Huge, okay. as tall as the trees. First thing Bane is gonna say, immediate deviate, like whichever's easier, directly left or directly right, and see if it keeps going on the path or if it turns to go towards us again. That's what we do. Yep, that's that's my immediate plan. Are you trying to be stealthy? Uh, when, when that so. fully depends on how far out it is. I, I'm gonna leave that to Winnie's discretion because she has the best idea of where this thing is. Um, you, yeah, is it sprinting for us? It is, it, give me a, what would this be? Um, you're seeing this through your wild sight. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you, so you're getting like sen sensations of this. Uh, give me like a, a nature check or like a All perception right, check, one of, one of the two. Um, I'll take probably perception. I think my perception is better than nature. Nope, it's not. Nature it is. Nature it is. How we all have half decent nature checks. We knew what Ooh. system we were going into. Do I happen to have advantage because it's 
the nature and the wild and the uh -oh. woods. <laughs> What'd you roll? Um, <laughs> actually, it's not as terrible as I thought it would be. It's a four. Or no, it's eleven. Eleven. I was thinking the wrong skill. It's eleven. eleven. Okay. It is still headed in your direction. Um, mm -hmm. It is rapidly approaching. The, what you feel is, so there's all these huge trees. You feel um, not necessarily like, like, like something stomping through the forest coming after you. What you instead feel is sort of like the breaking of branches up near, up near the top. Um, and like trees being slightly, ever so slightly pushed out of the way as something huge sort of like slaloms through the forest. Okay, so it's not sprinting for us. It's headed in our direction. So from this, do I think it's being stealthy? It sounds <laughs> like, as opposed to like, so when you feel the vibrations of like giants, cause you used your wild sight at the mm -hmm. Nunez estate, the vibrations of giants is like footsteps. It's like boom. You don't get that. It feels more like, for lack of a better word, a stampede. Okay. That's worse. That is, yeah, that is not necessarily That's worse. better. Worse. Um, I okay. I still like the idea of full pivot to the side, see where this is going. Uh. Yeah, I I think that's probably still the best plan. Okay. Uh, stealth, I'm leaving to Winnie, but. Can, I have an idea. Can I have a feeling like this is just a hunch? If that crystal was supposed to alert us that something is wrong, and forget me not, may have had the triggering thing, is it possible that that is a beacon, and they might be tracking that crystal? I believe that is what it is. Like we know, we know what it is. Yeah, it's like it, the light inside Bana's crystal points to where. Um, Forget, Forget me, me not, not crystal. Is. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's pivot to the right and see if it follows us. And if that is the case, there's a good chance that that thing is giving away our location. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out. Got it. So you all dash as far as you can to the right um, as this thing approaches. The Pretty soon, everyone can feel the the slight vibrations of this stampede and can hear the cracking of twigs in the trees um and as it gets closer and closer eventually um pivoting out from around a tree and and coming back going starting to go straight past you is the biggest walking tree you've ever seen and it's wait. hundreds of little legs are. Uh, wait, wait! I call after it. You gotta touch it. You gotta touch it. I'm like, I'm on my horse. I'm uh, on my horse. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna stop her. That seems like a, a plan. You run up. You touch it. You say, "Wait." Yes. The tree, the hulking mass, stops. Hello, can you hear me? I can't express how big this tree is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I wish I could use other words than really fucking big tree. Um, you yeah. can't even see the top of it. Um, but this entire Amen. mass um, rotates slightly as if turning mm -hmm. towards you. Mm -hmm. And you hear a voice speak to you much like you do um, when talking to other plants and it goes, I think the other tree I talked to, did I name it like Walter or something? Yeah. Wallace. What was the name of that dog you hated? Wall Wallace. Wallace. It's like, hello. Um, I've met one of your kind before, um, a, another walking tree in, oh my God, what's the name of our country? I brought, in Kazalor. Sorry. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> sorry. Another walking tree in Kazalor. Um, Sue Young just writes down, forgot the name of Homeland? <laughs> Question mark. By the name of Wallace. He didn't go by Wallace previously. He now goes by Wallace. I don't know how deep your roots go. He might have told you. Um, but we are looking 
for two people, two humanoids, that disappeared on us. Have you heard any talk of them? The tree, in the deepest, most resonating voice, it's in your mind, but somehow still vibrates mm. in your chest. Yeah. Goes, hmm. I do not know of a walking tree named Wallace. And I do not know of those missing. You are little. Are you? That's correct. Mm -hmm. With them? Who's them? My friends. Are your friends close by? I can tell them you're here. Um, I don't know if you should do that right now. Let me just let them know. No, maybe, hold on, hold on, who are your friends? Are they also little? Are they also little? The tree, he goes, oh yes. And the tree shimmies just a little bit. Gives like a little shake, like you got the cold chills. Um, uh, and suddenly, f flying down through the tops of the trees, two masked, seemingly humans on ropes wielding weapons and they aim them Why? at you <laughs> Why? and they go who the fuck are you this is a long story but if you're who i think you are um we're friends of jeremiah's well acquaintances roll me a persuasion check with advantage. Okay, 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 okay. Please don't fuck me, Castle or Dice. You gave me one nat 20 last <laughs> session. Do that again. Nat 20, I swear oh to God. Oh my God. I swear God. to God. I swear to God. Oh. Wow. Yes! <laughs> wow. Um, the masked person on the right says, are you here alone? No. We're he I'm here with one, two, three, four others, plus a vine hound. We're on the. We're looking for two of our companions. Um, I believe you might know where they are. All right, everybody out. Show yourselves. Uh, I'm. Was this in? Was Winnie's conversation happening in earshot of us? No, I mean, but you I now hear her having an way, active I'm conversation. Either way, I'm we're, yeah. yeah. I think we're all stepping out of cover. Uh, you all step out of cover. Um, there are now two more uh, masked individuals also rappelled down on ropes um, from this walking tree, all aiming bows and arrows um, at your group. And the one that's been so speaking to you. So extremely unnecessary. I can't emphasize this enough. The one yeah. that's been talking to you, um, uh, the smaller one that seems to be a female, says, you said you know Jeremiah? Yes. Why should I believe you? Um, uh, he almost kidnapped me, or, well, took me to, to sanctuary. You see the smoke. No, we one. are not here to rat you out in the name of the Masmus. Actually, no. we're basically retired. You see the smaller one size turns to a larger one that that first repelled down and says, Solomon, go let down the elevator. And the larger one goes, Ooh, you fucking got it, mate. Tugs on his rope twice and <laughs> gets hoisted up. The smaller one removes their mask. And Argy, you recognize them, but they look a little bit different. 
Her hair is no longer dyed blonde, but it is just as choppy and her face just as cold. This was one of Jeremiah's partners at the tryouts. And she says, <sighs> Hello, headliners. My name is Gwen Grimm. Welcome to Sanctuary. I also give Su Young the dirtiest look like this didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll didn't we'll handle him for sure, for sure. Yeah. Writing down, <laughs> writing down. Um, and really quickly, we have a little bit of artwork. And as she says, "My name is Gwen Grimm. Welcome to Sanctuary." She sort of outstretches her arms in uh, a half-hearted performance and goes, "And I am its protector." And that is where we will take our break. Notice Gwen Squadrel is full-time hater. Love that. <laughs> full-time hater. <laughs> Let's go. Um, and we will be back. Hey, if you made it this far, you're clearly a fan, you fucking dork. So you should consider joining us backstage, which is where we talk about the episode that just happened on the Patreon. It's incredibly fun. Um, Sometimes we even do episode relevant stuff like we rolled for how many horses we were going to have uh, going into this next episode in the after show. We also sometimes get totally sidetracked for half an hour and forget to, you know, you come here for the ramblings and that's what you get. Um, also, a few things to plug. Masmus Sourcebook, the Masmus Guide yeah. to Killing Giants, is still out, still available. We're getting tons of good feedback, but we wish we had more. So if yes. you are a purchaser of it, um, please consider giving feedback of any kind. We value every opinion. Don't fill it out and just tell us we're doing great. You can, but we would like some, <laughs> even just ideas um, that you have for an, a potential improvement. We already have quite a few good ones. The next major update will add things such as the witch squad roll which after the success of Splat, we are officially adding into the book, as well as balancing uh, issues. That is starting up. It's going to be really fun. We're already got yeah. the mechanics on lock. It's going to be, it's going to be cool. We're going to be adding balancing stuff. Um, some things are overpowered. Some things are underpowered. We're going to be fixing all of that. Um, uh, and coming up. And a genuine shout out to everyone who's already bought it too. It's been available for less than a month and already over a hundred copies sold, I think. Yeah. Like it's, it's going well. So just thank for, you to everyone for purchasing. For we really appreciate it. And don't forget, you'll get access to all future digital versions if you purchase. You'll just have to re-download it from the website. Um, yeah. And you'll get an email about it. Don't worry about it. Anyways, also, we have character-specific merch. We still have Kazlor merch at NathanApollo.com. We have character-specific merch at... Uh, the link in the description. I'm sure links are going through the chat right now. Um, there are different links for both because they're run by different people. Um, that's incredible. Go get some of that. We got stickers and t-shirts and hoodies and, and earrings and flags. Um, and we haven't shouted them out this entire season yet, but if you've enjoyed the battle maps that we have had, I got every single one of these from a creator on Patreon called Chi and Peku. Um, their link is going to be added to the description and will be retroactively added to all the previous videos because I forgot to do that. Um, but yeah, they are absolutely fantastic. And most of all, they are against AI art. Um, the artwork you saw in the opening scenes here, some of their maps come with just little scenic paintings, which is incredible. Um, so shout out Chi and Peku. You have been a crutch on this entire campaign and you do amazing work. That said, that is, I think everything we just met Gwen Grimm the protector of sanctuary um a, an elevator does get brought down like it's it's like a it's it's like a medieval elevator so it's like planks of wood it's, it's like a giant swing set basically so planks of wood attached to ropes attached up to something higher that you can't see and it gets cranked down so all of you and your two horses can be brought up to a location you can't yet see from the ground. Um, but assuming you all board the elevator, um, you get cranked up. Uh, very slowly, you get pulled up through the tops of the trees um, to what is Sanctuary, which sits at the top of this tree, but this tree is bigger than all the rest. This thing is is huge. 
Um, you get lifted up into like a wooden platform that's built onto one of the branches of the trees and you step out and see sanctuary for what it is. It is essentially a multi-layered community built within the sprawling branches of this walking tree. Um, the bottom base of it is probably, I don't know, a hundred feet in the air, and it goes all the way up even farther to <laughs> just stretching above you. You look up and you see leaves and branches as well as different levels and ladders and bridges, and it's kind of bustling with people. There's probably maybe a rough estimate a few hundred people here. Um, and it's sort of a whole thing. Um, you arrive at the top. Gwen is with you. Um, Solomon is with you. The other, the other goons have left. And Gwen kind of goes, all right, this is it. This is everything we've worked for for decades. Try your Baina, best not to ruin it while you're here. Baina looks around and more to himself than anyone else just says out loud, this does make a lot of things make more sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty tight-knit operation we got going on here. Um, I don't think anybody here has ever seen people in Masmus uniforms, so you might get some looks, but just follow me. And she and Solomon walk off. Can RG make an insight check uh, as to whether or not he's getting, he's specifically getting looks because they were addressed as his headliner squad. I guess they get papers here. It, um, any of one of red. Yeah, give me uh, an RG's insight. Obituary. Give me an insight. Uh, um, Oh, 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 I might have a reputation in town already. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a 17. 17? You don't see the general community sort of eyeing you in any particular way. Um, Gwen doesn't seem happy that you're here, but she doesn't seem happy that anybody's here. Okay. Um, I'm certainly not going to broach the topic to anyone, so we'll see where you guys, that goes. You guys follow Gwen and Solomon into, like, up, like, multiple levels of stuff into, like, a, a, a different sort of administrative-type building. Um, the door shuts behind you. They light some crystal lamps. Um, there's a table in the center with a bunch of chairs. This seems to be some sort of meeting room. And Gwen goes, take a seat. All of you. Um, by the way, your horses were tended to. They were taken to, as you walk through, there are, like, in this village, for lack of a better word, there is livestock, and there are farms, and there are, like, everything you could need um, in in a town. And you, and it's surprisingly sophisticated um, for what it is. But you guys did we have any leftover crab meat, or did Lexi eat it all? <laughs> Lexi probably ate it all. <laughs> God damn it, Lexi! Um, but you guys arrive in this meeting room. You all take a seat. Um, Solomon no longer has his mask on. He looks. Um, he's got like long hair that's tied into a tight man bun and like a long beard, um, and he's about Bane's age, and um, much older than Gwen. And they both sit down sort of at the head of the table. And Solomon goes, all right then, why are you lot here? Uh, Baina will step up as the leader of the squad uh, and be very honest with the official reason we're here, not any secret info yet, but he goes, well, fortunately for everyone involved in this meeting, let me be clear that we're not here for anything directly involving an attack. We are here as a fact-finding operation looking into some Atrarian enchanting developments. Hmm. Running into you was purely a coincidence. Well, there aren't many coincidences in the wild. Fortunately, this one seems like a positive one, then. Right, then. You're looking into crystals. I assume Correct. you are headed somewhere. 
Ideally up to Avalarium. We believe that that's the origination of the technique that we are investigating. All right, well, we wish you luck on your journey and goodbye. Hold on, well, hold on. Yeah, I, saw, yeah. I, saw, I saw Mike immediately go like, ah! <laughs> uh, what? Uh, we... I mean, there's the matter of our comrades who have gone missing. We presume they're here. Hmm. Uh, you got names? They don't have all the intro. I'll, I'll try to, like, we ran into some Kragaloths on the beach. Our comrades disappeared without a trace at some point during the battle. We've been searching for them on our way. Well, they ain't end up here. Again, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I think we're done here. And he starts to stand up. Well... Can we insight check that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Give me an insight. Actually, that's very... I'll good insight idea. as well. I feel like he's probably... I don't really know. If this no this reason not gonna to give me two net confirm it. That's a 12 for me. That's a 22. Yeah. Wow. All right. Arden's got it. Uh, he seems to be telling the truth. Hmm. Wow! <laughs> you seem to be honest about that, but there is, since we have happened to run into you, another matter where I would hope we could discuss. Uh, Argy's gonna, uh, stare at Bena while saying this related to our mission, if I may. The, the mission? Mission, our gentleman? The thing we're doing, Captain. I'm, I'm just gonna quick, quickly pull him aside. Normally I'm one to trust your judgment in these matters, but as much as Jeremiah was an ally of ours, do we wish to entrust people who are ultimately strangers with this information? This what is are they gonna so go do? Tell the Masmus? This is the Solomon that we have been looking for. We need to ask him about Cory, which probably leads us somewhere in the direction of Forget-Me-Not. suppose you're right. But I don't expect us to get too much information. Just be wary if the powers have... Well, we don't want a similar situation to what happened with his father, and how do we? Though he is, he kind of turns and looks over his shoulder, fully clothed. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you're it. concerned about, like, your reputation um, here, I can try just asking them. You know what? That's in a, a very really gentle way. Yeah. They apparently actually get papers here, so I don't want to push my luck. Yeah. That might actually be a, a fair point. Go ahead. So, Solomon, not to bring um, you back to one of your biggest failures, but ultimately one of the best things that happened to you, what Do you remember start. your tryout? So you Dana did immediately try out with regrets named Corey. I think you're confused here, Missy. You see, I don't think I am. <laughs> I think maybe you don't quite remember. Is that right? I don't think I have to answer any questions right now. We are questioning you. Now we. You want we to get spoke. to Avalarium? Yes, that is... How did you intend to do that? Walking through the Atrarian Wild? We had a ship, but ran into a, Levi a Leviathan, which derailed us. Yeah, the Wild will do that. And so what now? No ship. Shit out of luck. SOL. What's the plan? See, this is rough, because they can help us. They they do have the capacity to probably get us closer, faster, give us information. Yep. I am, I am hard pressed to find a reason why they would. <laughs> like, oh boy. Gwen speaks In up. Terms of can I just I'm also negative charisma. Gwen Gwen speaks up, <laughs> and says, mm -hmm. "Um, you said your friends went missing." Mm-hmm. And you said you thought they were here, it's, but you yes. weren't trying to find us? You just accidentally found us? We didn't necessarily think that they were here. However, as Solomon said, there are a few coincidences in the wild. Our friends go missing, and then we run into a mobile civilization shortly thereafter. Seems like a possibility. Tell me everything about how they disappeared. 
uh, I will do that. I'll spare us the recap, but I'll give all the information that seems like nothing seems non-sensitive enough that we can share. And roll me a persuasion with advantage. Oh, uh, I do have negative charisma. If, if well, I guess I was the one that did it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, actually, you know what? I do actually have persuasion. This I forgot I gave myself proficiency in that. Thing. With advantage, you said. Yep. Uh, with advantage, that's still a 10. <laughs> a 10. Yeah, Vayne is not the best at that. I'm when... more of an intimidating person rather than <laughs> personally... Gwen, persuasive. Gwen uh, thinks for a moment and her and Solomon exchange eyes. And he kind of shrugs. And she goes, we might know something. Oh, shocker. I say that to myself. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, please, <laughs> please not out loud. Uh, but is it, any information would be greatly appreciated. Solomon, go get it. He goes, you sure? Said, yes, go get it. Fucking all right. And he leaves and comes back and he tosses the corpse of a fairy onto the table. Oh. This fairy oh. has dark pink skin, like deep purple, almost black. And it has a crystal embedded in its back. I'm gonna need a nature check for people to know what this might be. Can I get advantage because it's crystal specialty? Uh, no. Not is on this. this out of, okay, this is out of range. Well, let's hope oh, my plus six. Oh, we've had a long rest. Functional plus nine if I need it. All right. Where's my good d20? There we go. Another nat 20. Another. Uh, that is, I, well, yeah, I got a 16, but I'm not going to burn a, a resource if we got a nat 20. We got this. Winnie, this is a fairy, obviously, but this is a specific mm -hmm. type of fairy. Some fairies have... Uh, whimsical or mystical abilities. Um, fairies with this deep colored skin tone, that's like a dark, dark purple, like mid midnight purple. Um, they're known as night fairies. Now, night fairies, typically their abilities allow them to move swiftly while in darkness and be completely invisible. With a nat 20, you could guess that perhaps that ability has been enhanced to allow for teleportation through darkness. Not the shadow stepping. Not and, the shadow stepping. And does the crystal okay. look like it's the the same Necrodia methods? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bane is immediately going to say that. That'll hopefully get us some goodwill. He's going to take a look at Well... It seems that you've stumbled upon the exact weapon that we're here to investigate. Have these been giving you trouble lately? No, not terribly. Gwen speaks up. Um, a few of us here at Sanctuary are classified as protectors. And we make sure nothing slips through the cracks of our hidden village. And fairies don't normally come up this high, but we had an incident um, recently where, well, as you can see, we encountered one and we quickly handled it. Anything nice that does see us cannot be, especially an enemy, cannot be permitted to leave. All right. So I guess that so, doesn't make us enemies. Um, For now. Did they say how long ago this specific one was captured or killed? They said, uh... We saw this one just a couple days ago. So th this is this is not the one that kidnapped Fair and Splat. It would just be a similar right. thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's they were that's in the kind area. of bad, but good to know. Uh, all right. Um, okay. I I want to ask her some more information on this. So kind of turning the conversation intentionally away from allegiances and trying to get very specifically down to like, let's compare battlefield notes. Uh, Bane is going to talk to, I think Gwen, because she seems like she'd be the one to know this and is probably more open. Goes, 
when exactly did you start seeing these crystal enhanced fairies arise? This is the first. Interesting. And if this is what and took your friends, they're gone. We don't know where they take them. When you encountered this, were you closer to Avalarium than you are now? A little bit, yeah. Surprising. So we know there's multiple of them out there. That is worrying. We also know that they can definitely use these crystals to enhance multiple different types of magic. That does imply to me that they are working on new applications of the technology at a fast rate. As we expected, Peter kind of turns to the squad and goes, so it seems our warning to the Warlord Council was entirely accurate. Great, so you can get going then. Go report to your fancy brass and get out of our hair. Uh, I, I as the player, need to think for a second. So what I'm going to stall <laughs> for, Bane is, um, can I, just as the conversation is going, inspect the crystal and like actually analyze it for like doing, again, what we were supposed to be doing here, compare this to the old one, see if I can gain sure. anything. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, okay, so I'm gonna be do it. If anyone else has anything to say, I'm doing that as we're talking and I'll think about, you know, next plays. I still really want to ask Solomon about Corey, but I don't know if I should do that in a group setting or just like one-on-one. -on -one. To be fair, um, I think I, I'm getting, more, Baina is getting more open to the idea, especially because from the little that we've seen, Gwen seems to be more open to helping us than Solomon is. And it's right now just us and those two, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, Bane is talking, or not talking, looking at the crystal, but as a player, I'll say, I don't hate it at this point. So do it with the group because Gwen might help us a little bit. Okay. Well, um, yeah, even if she doesn't know anything, like, I don't think she's going to... She seems more open to helping than Solomon is, so I don't right. think she's going to make things worse. So we kind of skip past it earlier, but I really want to go back to that Corey thread if we could, Solomon, because it is very much related to our mission and very much something that I've been investigating discrepancies in the Maximus's record keeping, and I'd really like to know about this figure that has been seemingly erased from history. Have you guys mentioned that you're here to find Forget-Me-Not at all? I don't think so. That Alluded no, not to yet. It. Alluded we, to yeah, it. we're kind of we're dancing around it, but we have not said it. Yeah, I think it's definitely guessable that we're not. I don't think he trusts us anyway, so I feel like it's reasonable to assume that he thinks we have some secret operation, but we have not said what. Gwen places a hand uh, in front of uh, Solomon and stares directly at RG and goes. Don't answer any of his questions. He'll just twist your words into lies. Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> I'm not intending on reporting any of this because these are very sensitive national matters. Hmm. But I also acknowledge I have no room to talk. That piece is... Pretty knowingly, not Jeremiah's will. Oh, really? Is it not Jeremiah's will to be martyred as a model Casalorian, you fucking dickhead? Don't talk again. Thank you. Okay. Baina, hearing that, will kind of speak up. And uh, referring to, to both RG and Sue Young, as much as I dislike splitting up my group in this situation, perhaps it would be more diplomatic if the uh, reporters among us left the negotiations. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be good. All right. RG leaves. Sue Young uh, also leaves. I kind of like shoot RG a look as he's going, sort of subtly if I can. Not like, not like a bad look, but like if you find anything interesting while you're out there, 
Like, you're still here. You know, see what you can find. Uh, Gwen actually goes, also, I would prefer if actually everyone except the captain here left. I mean, yeah, mm. I'll, I'll allow it at that point. Uh, I think it's worth asking why. I think it's worth you not talking again. What did I just say? I appreciate the concern, Argentum, but I do understand where they're coming from in this scenario. Uh, I I will give you, uh, as you're going, I'll just, for now, I'm going to give you the, the horn. The horn that if you blow it, I assume it's still attuned to you, uh, that if you blow it, only I can hear. So if something goes crazy, uh, you've got a private alarm system to me. Uh, I'm just going, if you need me for anything urgent, here you go. I'm not going to tell them it's magic, but... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, before I leave, I take off a flower. I hand it to Gwen and say, plant this somewhere in Sanctuary. If you ever have the feeling of the Mazmus getting a little too close, let me know. I'll throw them off your scent. Thank you. And she places it on the table for now. Uh... Last thing I want to do, like, as people are leaving, uh, Amphis is on my person, of course. Uh, I'm just going to have Amphis, like, slither up in front of my field of view. I had a thought. Uh, the crystal, the the forget-me-not beacon has, like, a, a tracking element on it. It points right? in a direction, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, I, with how compasses kind of work, if you're, like, close enough to the target, the needle's going to move faster. Yeah. Can I kind of see? I highly doubt this is the case, but I want to check it, since this is a new factor. The Crystal does not seem to indicate that Forget Me Not is here, right? Um, like from moving it around, the, the, the and still pointing to Avalarium consistently. Uh, yeah, no, no. Okay, I and, didn't think so. Had to do my due diligence. And actually, there. really quickly, as as the rest of the headliners are filing out, and you, uh, Winnie, you hand this um, flower to um, Gwen. She goes. That reminds me. Sanctuary almost never stops moving. How did you stop the tree? Who knows? Okay. If you're not gonna be useful, then get out of here. And then it is just Baina and um, Solomon and Gwen. Yeah. Uh, as the others, uh, by the way, you are not left alone. You are um, with people, um, seemingly other protectors of sanctuary. Um, yeah. Uh, RJ has the alarm horn if anything goes south. Uh, in there, I'm going to, since Gwen was the one that sort of suggested everyone else leave, I'm going to wait to see if she has anything to say first, she or Solomon. Gwen, yeah, Gwen speaks up and says, you were talking to yourself about this crystal. You said you've seen something like this before. Seen and been severely injured by, yes. They to what degree? More applications than you've seen. Hmm? How so? The giant that we saw with one of these attached to it, used it as amplification of a natural gift, much like this fairy used it to amplify its natural abilities. The one we saw had uh, ice-based abilities. Gave me a nasty chill along with several members of my squad. We also know that in at least one other place in Kazalor, there was a similar crystal used to amplify sonic abilities from a giant. They are not limited to fairies or fairy abilities, which is one of the chief reasons for concern. All right. And if she doubts, like, I'll add just a, to add sort of extra proof to this. He has his notebook. I'll, like, pull and show my notes, like, of the documented pages and stuff, yeah. just proving that there's precedent for this. Um, this ice giant, that's the one that uh, Jeremiah died, correct? Yes, correct. And you're sent here to, what, find out more about them? To be more specific... We directly requested this mission and were sent here, yes, but with some persuasion on our parts. Your teammates 
kept mentioning this name. What's that about? Uh, when that said, before I say anything, can I insight check Solomon just to see, like, if he has any, what his sort of reaction to that being brought back up again is? If he yeah, has any sure. recognition? Okay, not that I have good insight, but... Uh, yeah, that's nothing. That's like a seven. Yeah, hard to uh, say. Tough guy to read. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm gonna start vague at the very least. We are aware that these crystals are, as ominous as this sounds, generated through what I can really only call entrapment of souls. A Masmus operative with a very unique and specialized gift went missing in this area recently. We are concerned that their gift may be somehow used in this technology as a very powerful tool. So we're investigating their disappearance as best we can. That is the true nature of this mission. You're talking about Forget-Me-Not. Forget-Me-Not's gone missing? I, um... Masmus operative in Atraria? Who else could it be? What do you think I'm stupid? No, yes, we're not your stupid. Yes, we yes, are looking you think I'm for. Stupid. Wow, bold operations happening from the head. We are squad. looking for forget me not. Forgive my attempt at secrecy. This is a very unexpected development in our little quest, as the past few days have been full of. Yes, well, you've stumbled upon the biggest secret in all of the wild. So everything else kind of goes out the window. Listen. Was it public knowledge? Was it ever printed in the newspaper that how these supercharged crystals work? Um, that would... So the, the Warlord Assembly knows and we left shortly after. So uh, I guess it wouldn't really be up to me. I will say that if they asked Baina or, or were taking Baina's like, advice into account, he probably would have said, hey, let's not print anything about this super dangerous experimental magic and right. just release it to the public yet. But, like, ultimately, I don't think he got a say in that final decision, so that's your call. Um, I don't think it's been enough time. Um, so, okay. Where do we leave off? Uh, biggest secret in all the wild. Biggest Everything else kind of goes out the window. Yeah. Gwen goes, I'll be honest. It's quite obvious that you need help. It's written all over your face. Too afraid to ask. I know what someone who needs help looks like. Y'all got it. I'm hesitant to lead a civilization of people so close to the enemy. For what it's worth, you would not be leading a civilization. You would be leading our small group alone. I personally, as captain, have no interest in any sort of deep forward attack into Atraria. I am a scientist first and foremost. This is a technology I would like to understand before it causes more harm. Yes, but my work, but that is my only intent. You need to get there quickly, yes? And you intended to Ideally, do that by blindly traveling through the Atrarian wild on not enough horses? We would not take such a dangerous route if haste were not important. We could get you there by sundown tomorrow. I was hoping you would say something to that effect, though, understandably, I was not going to be the one to ask, given, well, given a number of reasons. But we would need some things in return. Of course. I can't promise anything at the moment, but your well, proposal is... Some welcome. you will have to. First is utmost secrecy of sanctuary after your departure. I, personally, have no interest in interfering with sanctuary's operations as an individual or as a captain of the Masmus. As a captain of the Masmus, I will ensure that my squad feels the same. She looks at Solomon, and Solomon kind of goes. She goes, all right. Second thing is we can't get you all the way there. We can get you close, but I'm not going to bring, 
I'm not worried about bringing you there. I'm worried about bringing Sanctuary there. The Once again, goes, reasonable. This is a very large base. I would not ask you to push too close to an enemy headquarters. And third, you need to tell me how that girl of yours stopped our tree. Um, I mean, that's obviously going to get a little bit more pause. Uh, also, like, in Baina's mind, I feel like it's it's guessable. If, if you think about it a lot, like, when he has plant magic pretty clearly from, from her person, plant You can just say the truth. I asked it to stop. Yeah, she, 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 talks, stop she talks to Spud. I feel like it's not something that she would be super... Uh, like secretive about so yeah sure I'll tell you goes uh, that is her gift she has the ability to communicate directly with plant life quite impressive roll me an insight uh, an insight yeah okay. we just admitted that she planted a fucking bug on them guys <laughs> did I even see that um that was happening no, as I was I, leaving I, I literally told them you... if they needed to they could tell they, yeah. I said plant this yeah. if that they is think the they're thing. getting she... a little close you... let me know Winnie did like pretty heavily imply that it was about, like I know I know that capacity. Winnie meant it with the utmost like good um, intention. I don't to know be fair, she didn't plant that. it anywhere. She, yeah, she didn't I plant it. it yeah. Also, yeah. like I we do have myself. I gave them the option. Yeah. Um, if questioned, we also do have evidence. Winnie needs to be in physical contact for that to work, and we did see she like sprinted after the tree to get there. So yeah, there's I, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. too worried about that. Um, insight, I accidentally clicked off D and D Beyond. Where's my character sheet? No, but I can talk uh, to my plants. I can't talk to other plants right, without right. touching it. We don't need to say so all of the, get the details here. Anyway, with my plus one insight, I'm going to get a twelve. Not the worst. Um, when they hear that Winnie can talk to plants. Both Solomon and uh, Gwen sort of fail at hiding um, sort of like a pleasant surprise. Um, and they go, and then one last question. And you have to be honest, or we'll kill you. I have no intent on being dishonest. These crystals... They were used on giants with gifts to enhance them. It's what killed Jeremiah. Jeremiah was the strongest protector I've ever seen. Not much can kill him. That I've seen as well. Are you genuinely, and not the brass, you, the brains, genuinely scared for all of humanity on what this technology can do. That obviously is going to cause him to, to pause for a second. As I said a moment ago, I am first and foremost a scientist, a soldier, yes, but that is not how I see myself. When I look at these crystals, I will admit that fear is not necessarily the first thing that comes into my mind. I am someone who works with crystals themselves. I have worked with pseudo-conscious crystals, as you can see with my animated companion here. These crystals are powerful. These crystals are dangerous. And when I look at them, I see something incredibly intriguing, something that I, after having spent months on research, do not understand. And when I see something this powerful that even I do not understand, that causes me fear. And if we take you to where you need to go, did you mention that Fertala might be behind this, by the way? Question mark before I continue on this scene. Uh, that not I, yet. That, like, if, one asked, person. I, if asked, I will. I don't think, like, we know she operates out of Avrilium, so I don't yeah. think that's classified info. We'll assume it was talked about during revealing your true plans. Yeah, I talked that. about the nature of the crystals, too. Yeah. Uh, that It's reasonable that I would have said it. Um, she goes... Well then, we can take you close to Avalarium. But not only do you have to fetch your friend, but you need to put a stop to this 
crystal business because if there's one thing I do care about, it's humanity. I can give you my honest word that we will try our best. I can't lie, and therefore I cannot guarantee that we will be successful. But I don't think that you expect a guarantee of success as a warrior yourself. This is true. And I also know that the odds of this predicament are incredibly slim, and the wild has brought us together for a reason. I don't think you could have done this mission without Sanctuary's help. I agree. And to the point of Sanctuary's help, I know that certain things that have been said in the press were not as flattering to Jeremiah's memory as oh. many in this community might have expected. Fuck that RG kid. He means well, but regardless of that, let me say, as both his captain, unwilling though he was to have that be the case, and his friend, he fought well, he died well. As I'm sure you know far more than I do, he spent his whole life protecting others to the best of his ability, and I can genuinely say that his life ended in a way that I believe, tragic though this may be, he would have been able to appreciate. I can say that my squad and surely many others in the area would not have gotten away with their lives were it not for his sacrifice. And though they weren't members of Sanctuary, as you said, you care about humanity. Jeremiah cared about the same. And his memory, though maybe not honored correctly in Kazalor, will be honored correctly by the wild itself. Thanks. We'll get you guys rooms. You can just hang out. All right. Your navigation on this is better than mine, so we'll wait for your call. Very well. And she kind of dismisses you. Um, you you all walk out of the meeting room. Um, Gwen approaches Winnie specifically and says, I need you to come with me. Okay, alone, or do I get to bring a posse? Alone, please. Okay, I follow her. Don't worry, we've already organized with your captain that we are going to take you as far as we can to Avalarium. We've come to an agreement mm -hmm. of sorts. But uh, during our discussion, she holds up the flower you gave her. She goes... He mentioned that you can communicate with plants. I can. There's someone I'd like you to meet. And you guys travel quite some ways through this um, sanctuary and eventually arrive at uh, closer to the base of, of the tree uh, at this sort of little hut. And uh, Gwen knocks on the door and you hear an old woman go, come in. She goes, opens the door, you walk in, and you see an ancient woman. <laughs> <laughs> Truly ancient. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Truly ancient. Um, she has, um, almost like she's half fish. She has like fins sprouting from her forearms very clearly gifted uh, and in the middle of her shack is like a branch coming right through um, and Gwen goes um, immediately changes demeanor by the way when she was talking with all you at first very cold as soon as she's in front of this person very kind very warm demeanor and she goes hi Grammy and Grammy goes, oh, hello, Gwen. It's a pleasure to see you. Who's this friend? I don't recognize their face. And Gwen's like, this is, what's your name again? Winnie. 
He says, Winnie. Winnie is a lot like you, Grammy. She can talk to plants. Grammy goes, Oh, can you really? Yes. Um, I don't mind me asking. You can talk to plants. That seems, I don't know, you don't look like you should be able to talk to plants. I mean, the, the fins? Yeah, well, I guess nobody really chooses how their gifts activate. But yes, this was just yeah. a byproduct. Uh, I talk to old Kanjik here all the time. And she pats the trunk. Kanjik? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oldest walking tree in the wild. Oh, well, I met a different walking tree in Kazalor by the name of Wallace. Oh. Um, Kanji wasn't familiar. Oh, it must be hard to get around as a walking tree. He was a lot smaller, so maybe just very new to the system. Yes. Uh, Kan me and my communication with Kanjik is the only way we can travel to locations that we need to. And we have a very oh, good relationship. I'm sorry, I must have gotten in the way of it. Were you if you don't if I'm if I'm allowed to ask, where were you headed? Well, we always, for, for the most part, in, in this time of year, we're kind. We kind of just let him do whatever he wants. He likes to roam around, um, and that's what he was doing today. But around the time of, you know, the tryouts, uh, Gwen here has told me it's it's better if we're closer to the border, so we can sort of bring in uh, new kiddos that want a home. And so occasionally we ask favors, but only sparingly when, you know, we need resources of some kind. Interesting. Okay. And in return, he gets my kinship. <laughs> We've been friends, oh, decades. So... Yeah, you can tell you're lovely company. Yes. I like to think so. Kanjik might argue sometimes, and he might get a little bored <laughs> of my stories. Would you like to all talk together? Yeah, that'd be... I've never done this before, but yeah. Me neither. I have to touch him for mine to work. Me too. Oh. Connected through the wild. I just put my hands out. And you tap in. And Kanjik speaks. He goes, hmm. Hello. Hello, Hello Kanjik. Yeah. I brought a friend. Hmm. Friend. Hi, I'm I'm Winnie. I asked you to stop a moment ago. Hmm. To tree speakers. This is new. Yeah. Who would have thought? Not me. Um, Gwen walks up to Grammy and goes, We need you to ask Kanji to take us um, north near Avalarium. She goes, oh, Of course, of course, sure. Uh, Kanji, dearie. Yes, Grammy. Could you take us due north? Uh, we have some people who need to get close to Avalarium, I believe it was. Sure. Ooh. And you feel suddenly as the tree begins to move, it is surprisingly smooth. I mean, you saw him at the, on the ground, seamlessly slaloming between the trees. And he starts to make way. As all the leaves rustle, you can hear it. It sounds like a static or applause. Um, and he's on the move. Thank you so much, Kanjik. Always the best. Oh, I think when he's thinking in her head that this woman is ancient. How long does she have left to live? And then who will tell Kanjik where to go? Is this... Is this where... She and 
Lexi should make a life in right. Sanctuary. Yeah. Sort of a backup plan. It's a good, it's a nice place. Um, Kanji starts moving. Um, how long do you want to sit here and talk, all three together? I think, like, probably we'll talk the whole time. <laughs> For Just sure. Because it's, it's extremely unique to have to meet someone with your exact same gift. Yeah, extremely And rare. be able to, like, ex to, like, have that sort of bond. Because yeah. she's obviously way older than me and has had this a lot longer. She can probably teach me how to use my gift better. For sure. Um, like, if she still has to use, if she still has to use touch, probably nothing I can do about that. But can she also produce things to communicate with other people? Um, so, I mean, you guys talk. She says if she, she can do the thing where you talk through flowers, but she has to pluck them first. She has to mm. pluck them from somewhere. And then they kind of become, like yours, a little magical. And she goes... I, I do confess, I did drop one in the ocean, and I am afraid to talk to it. Oh, honey, I made the same mistake myself. Yeah, it's oh a tough one. Oh, my God. It's a tough one. Oh, my God. One. Let me guess. I'm... You thought you could talk to, like, the seaweed? Yeah, and yeah. they were actually really mean to my flower, oh. and I feel so bad about terrible, it. Terrible, terrible plants, the seaweed. Not, not so mean. Not good. Yes, I think mine is still out there somewhere, and uh, yeah, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> well, now at least it has a friend. Yeah, maybe it's nice to think about. It's nice to think about, but yeah. Yeah, no more. I did the same thing, and uh, was equally traumatized. <laughs> Well, I'd like it if you took one of my flowers so we can <gasps> maybe communicate. Of course, I'd love to. She takes yes. one and she puts it in her hair. Kind of like a, like a little, just a, like behind her ear. Aww. You guys will get this reference, but this is, there's a part of Aquamarine that has something very, very similar. <laughs> None of you here. This is falling on deaf ears. It's fine. I actually, if this is the fucking movie about the mermaids, it was one of my faves as yes. a kid. <laughs> yes. With the starfish ears. Oh, yeah, yeah, to talk yeah, yeah. The little starfish. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Um, yeah. And so, and it's crazy to everyone else. You guys are just sitting in silence. <laughs> like this, when you're tapped into the tree, it's all in here. It's it's like, mm -hmm. you don't even need to speak. And so at, at, after like 15 minutes, Gwen will just be like, all right, I will leave you to it. Yeah. You two have fun now. Don't, don't get too crazy. Grammy used to throw ragers back in the day. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yes, I have to tell you about it. Kanjik, you've heard this before, but you'll have to suck it up. Kanjik goes, oh, <laughs> no, no, this story rips. rips. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, we transition away. Um, for everyone else, uh, Momo, you said you're probably going to talk to Grammy this whole time. Um, yeah. You have till sundown tomorrow. Eventually, you'll have to sleep. You do have dorms, but... You got picked up kind of in like the early morning afternoon. Sundown tomorrow, you'll be at your destination. Um, people you want to talk to, sites you want to see, you're in sanctuary. All right, look. <laughs> I, I want to try talking to Solomon one more time. Okay. At a moment where he's not with Gwen. For sure, for sure, for sure. For what it's worth... It seems that the general public of Sanctuary have no idea who you are. That's great. Unfortunately, I do think I need to ask Solomon specifically because yeah. I do. Uh, I'll signpost this. I'll. Uh, we can do this now. Um. Well, I just don't know if it's going to lead anywhere as a DM. Yeah. But yeah, RG no. wants to. And if there's a better, if I can go about learning about this with the locals, I can. But RG wants to learn about the sedative and amnesiac thing mm. that he got hit with. Yeah, um, Solomon would be the guy to talk to about that. Business. Awesome. Uh, so RG's gonna try to get him at a moment where he's alone. Cool. You 
late in the later in the evening, let's say, um, find Solomon at the top of the tree. There's like a balcony up there where you can just see for miles. Granted, all you see is the tops of smaller trees as um, Kanjik is the biggest tree in the forest. Um, but as you're as you're moving through them and he's just up there, you find him. Ooh. You are not an easy fella to find. Oh, great. Uh, hello. Hello. So we don't have to talk about Corey, and I fully acknowledge that as a person in this play in this space in sanctuary, I don't have much of a right to be digging around about anything. Right. But if there's anything I could ask about, it's surely something that happened to me at the hands of you guys. Hmm. Yeah, I think I remember you. You were the yeah. snarky one. Triads a few years ago. Yes, I was not very kind then either. I get a little mm, bitchy when it comes to ideals and stuff. Um, so that night, you or Gwen, for obvious reasons I can't remember who, stuck me with a sedative and an amnesiac. Yeah. That is a very potent and I don't think naturally occurring combination, so how did you come across such a substance? How was it made? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't heard of it. It's an elixir of sorts that uh, can only be crafted with a greeting found in a terraria. Hmm. I'm not quite uh, up to snuff on my elixir making, but uh, from what I understand, yeah, it's just the Trarian resourced ingredients. They don't grow in Kazalor or Estrasol. Provided us with a unique advantage. Can I insight to see if that's the whole truth? Yeah, sure. Uh, that is a 15. Seems like the whole truth. Okay. If you could just put a suspicion I've had to rest, the fact that this is somewhat similar to f Forget Me Not's abilities is pure coincidence? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, gifts tend to mimic things in nature frequently, anyways. Perhaps these ingredients in the wild are actually. Perhaps we didn't take from Forget Me Not. Perhaps Forget Me Not took from the source, just like us. Well, you'd certainly have a direct perspective on that. After all, I assume you've experienced both. No, I've never met Forget Me Not. Hmm. But you knew Corey. Why do you keep bringing up that name? Well, your partner in your Masmus tryouts just oh. so happens to be a phantom member of my captain's squad. A person who only existed at those tryouts, made it into the Masmus, but has no records thereafter. Gosh, so I'm curious yeah. to know, do you remember anything about Corey? Yeah, my tryouts. Yeah, that's right. Um, bad time. Bad time. Did not do well. Mm. This what isn't, exactly happened? This isn't going to make it in some manifesto, is it? I have no reason to publish any of this. Purely, truly, I want to know the end of this mystery. <laughs> I have been investigating this and poring over papers in my quarters for months. And frankly, I think if I didn't get an answer now, I would explode. Roll me a persuasion with advantage. Please. Gotta be a little pathetic with it if you want to be persuasive. <laughs> please tell me the... Please. <laughs> please! Please, 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 please. 
Uh, okay, uh, that's persuasion. Persuasion. Do, 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 do. 23. Wow. You Pathetic goes, works. Pathetic works. 19 on the die. Um, he goes, well, yeah. So, tryouts. Sweet mother, that was 16 years ago. Fucking hell, I'm getting old. Right. Um, tryouts. That year, we did duos. Um, of course, we had no way of knowing it'd be duos. Uh, another thing they did different that year was the duos were randomly assigned. And uh, that took a lot of people by surprise. Um, not a very popular choice either. Kind of ruined a lot of um, mm. people's plans. And I remember my tryout partner was real upset about that one, yeah. Wanted to, had like plans of being with someone else. Huh. Do you have any recollection of who they were planning to be with? Um. Well, they tried to be nice about it and not let me know, but I'm kind of keen on these kind of things. Yeah, they wanted to be paired with their brother. Their brother? Mm hmm. And. Who might that be? Um. Let me think about their name. Gosh, so far back. Gonna roll. That's a now twenty. Let's <laughs> fucking go, Solomon. That's a now twenty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I remember. I remember. Brother's name was Adrian. You motherfucker. <laughs> What? Was that mean something? A do you do you have a last name? Perhaps a last initial for that? Yeah, or something weird like Bunker. Hmm. That bit, or I want to make this so clear. That bit earlier where Bena was like, "I just found out that I was close with a few squad mates, but don't remember why. Didn't know this was happening. That happened organically." In the same episode as this reveal. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I had to cut our conversation short, but I really got to do something really quick. Get there, get there, get there, get there. <laughs> Isn't this happening like up in the branches? I'm imagining our yeah. Archie just straight up falls out of the tree. There is a very. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Look. There's a very delicate way to handle this situation, and I do not think RG is going to do it. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? The fucking also, twist of all okay, twists. People, Jesus. People in chat don't remember this because it's Captain Baina everywhere. That's fucking me. His name RG. is Adrian Baina. <laughs> RG is practically running on all fours to Baina. <laughs> Just leap. Pre <laughs> You've seen the video of the guy chasing the poor woman just fully really going for the clouds, like with every like step, a just feral <laughs> cat. <laughs> cool. Oh. You find Captain Bane, or probably Bane, probably hears RG coming first as all the trees leave, the, or all the birds fly from the tree. Uh, as he's Bane, up, like, was, he has his bow ready. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, oh, gentle, what's happening? <laughs> What? I heard you from boy. halfway down the street. You sibling have. Explain, please. Say that again. To Solomon, Corey has brother. Your brother. Corey, is Solomon, B. Corey, Solomon is Corey's brother. No, you are Corey's brother. Apparently. So what's Argenta, going on? Nothing you're saying is making any level of sense. Solomon said that Corey was planning to be with their brother, Adrian Bunker, or some shit. Well, it's obviously you, because of course it was your year of the tryout. So what is going on? 
Bunka? He didn't remember your last name, but it was obviously Baina. Argentum, I'm not under... One... One more time. <sighs> Corey, from the tryouts, was originally planning to be with their... with their brother, allegedly someone named Adrian, which can only be you, which, as per our current theory, and granted we have a couple of very hot threads there that are almost snapped, but if we are to go by that logic, forget-me-not is your sibling. Baina just Thoughts? sits down cross-legged in the middle of the road. <laughs> Argy joins him. <laughs> uh... There, there's like a solid 60 seconds where he doesn't say shit. Uh, you can like, you can hear his brain. <laughs> like <laughs> he's thinking so much. There is heat uh, emanating from <laughs> his body. Yeah. <sighs> Af after, like I said, at least a full minute of him just being silent, he turns to Amphis and just goes, did you know about this? And I was about, I, mean, I assume there's some some rattle or something from the 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 I don't know there. maybe. <laughs> well, but he Memphis knew before, so I'm like, there's got to be something. Clear. He gives you like an affirmation of some kind. Uh, <laughs> just like this, the blank like this. Hold on. <laughs> does my does my magic snake have eyelids? <laughs> uh, okay. Dear Lord, Bane's reaction is much like mine, being that this what a what a twist. Uh, he just he, he then stands up. He goes, and then he sits back down. Uh, <laughs> RG can't sit back down. He starts like pacing around you. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, oh, all all the dots begin and, to connect. And you're sure that Solomon isn't just a a buffoon of some sort? I mean, his father wasn't particularly helpful. Are we sure he wasn't just saying something to get rid of you? I was the dick in that situation, and he's clearly hyper competent at what he does. Right, okay. And and that would mean that Right. So then of course this Hmm. I, I mean, wonder of course if this tree drink. can move faster than it is. I that's I don't think that's possible. I mean of course you wouldn't remember any of this considering, you know their abilities, but that also does my, mean that there probably was a time where you did know general, about yes, this. Yes, of course. My, my my general unsettled response to Forget Me Not does make far more sense after all this. So I suppose that's also incredibly sad when you think about it on an emotional level, so let's ignore that for now. Compartmentalize. 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 Look, his practicality is paramount in this situation, Argento. Um... He stands up, and he walks like four feet, and then he sits back down again. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh... I would like for there to be something I can do immediately in this situation. Uh, there is nearby. Uh, we'll say you you are sitting out here for a while as it starts. Oh yeah, to, no, I, I, to, to be dusk. clear, that wasn't like fishing for anything either. He's genuinely just like, mm, we're already moving. I gotta know what I can do. As it as it turns, if to you wanna, <laughs> if you. If you want to revisit this in the morning, I have a way that we can get you to sleep, and you're not going to remember learning this. That was... what? Solomon's thing, they shot me with it. It's a... it makes you go to sleep, and also it, it makes you a little amnesiac. And I don't think you're going to sleep at this rate, so it might actually be a decent idea. Beta considers it genuinely, and he goes... <laughs> It might be best to process this now so that I've had a little bit more progress on the subject rather than learning about it once we're closer to Avalarium. Okay. Um, are you yep. in a state to walk to the hotel? 
Yeah, the, um, the, um, not the hotel. There's like a dorm. tavern. There's like a tavern <laughs> nearby. A tavern. Which, by the way, Lexi and Ari have like at some point bust out uh, and be like, Lexi busts out and be like, "Oh, Beta, RG, they got Beta's booze like on his back in the center of the road." Good, Lexi. They got booze in the rooms. It's crazy. And really good. Don't get too drunk. Don't get yourself a hangover. We have a family member to rescue. I don't know what that means, but you got it, Cap. I'm only half certain myself, Lexi. Um, we'll debrief in the morning, Lexi, and that'll make more sense. Do you want some of the booze, Captain? I think that's a lovely idea, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I'll... I'll stand up walk on my I own power to the tavern where we're staying cool so everybody spends their time doing the things boozing or contemplating or talking with a grandma um through a tree spirit and uh all of it yeah you know everybody's partying to some degree <laughs> um and eventually you know we can just fast forward all the way to, we'll say, in case you guys have something left. Actually, easier way to do this. We fast forward all the way to as far as um, Kanji can take you. It's still going to be like an hour out. Um, notably, your crystal, at some point you would have had to talk to somebody about this. But your crystal is not pointing directly to Avalarium, now that you're getting okay. closer. It, it actually weans a little to the right, and you'll have to get Kanjik to change directions slightly. Um, we don't have to roleplay that. Um, but you're, you're, you're nowhere near the city. Well, you're near it, but you know you get what I'm saying. You're not at the yeah, edge this, of the this city. This is clearly not in the heart of yeah. the city. Um, you're clearly on, you're, you're close to some sort of outskirts, uh, or the crystal seems to be leading you to some sort of outskirts, and you are about, I would say, six hours of of tr horse travel from there like they left a good bit of distance um between them and yeah. where you need to go um i think this is this if the answer was yes they do nothing this would probably be stated but do they have any information about like where we are near do they know of any sort of a trillion base in this area um gwen will tell you not really we very rarely come up this north. Um, we're doing this as a favor for the sake of humanity, because that's the one thing we can agree on, that people don't deserve to die. And yes. frankly, assuming you're successful, we could potentially pick you back up. But we would need some way to communicate, I suppose. And she holds the flower that Winnie gave. We have some way to do that. I can give this to Grammy. Oh, Grammy already has one. Oh, okay, cool. Then yeah, Grammy will let us know. We again, this is as far as out as we can go. I can't risk anything more, and frankly, I don't want to stay here that long. Right, excellent, uh, excellent, good. Yes, for however many days this has been, like Beta's mood so clearly different than what it was. He's more, he's back to his more neurotic self. <laughs> You seem uh, a bit shaken up. Are you getting cold feet? No, no, my feet are quite warm. Um, Don't forget the promise you made me. Uh, for that, he turns a little bit more serious. Actually, even maybe even more serious than what it was made the first time. He goes, yes, my commitment to this operation, to the protection of my squad, and to the secrecy of this place is still priority in my mind. All right. Can I get the fuck out of here already? Yeah, yeah. You guys can leave. And, uh, oh, by the way, Argentum, uh, fuck you. Mm. Baina, still fully dissociating, not, like, hearing what anyone is saying at all, just kind of starts going down to the other. Like, yes, 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 fuck you, Argentum. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, sure. well. Thank you for being here, and uh, wouldn't mind if you didn't make it back. Okay. Sure. Rude of cool. you. I can't defend myself because that's. I'm just gonna leave. Yep, it's the worst kind of roast. 
Hi. Goodbye. And uh, they lower you in an elevator down to the wild floor. And I think that is where we will end. Uh, let's actually just finish the show today. <laughs> I would like to <laughs> yeah. just keep going. That is where we will end this episode of Tales from Kazalor, the Golden Era. A little bit of a shorter one, probably, after the edit. Um, and that's because we've got a lot of big things coming. A um, little bit of an announcement. We do have a scheduled break um, on what would it be? Scheduled break for YouTube. There will not be an episode on the 21st. And for Twitch, there will not be a live stream on the 16th. Uh, Colossal Con is happening. And Matt will be going to that. Yeah. And I will be going to that. So we have a scheduled break. And Panda is going to that as well. We have like the, the a big chunk of the D&D Dorks crew will just be walking around. We're not doing like a panel or anything. But if you're at Colossal Con near Austin, say hi because we'll be hanging out. Yeah. And so scheduled break. Um, but we will have an episode on the 14th. And so uh, next week. But thank you so much for watching. We're about to head backstage. And if you pay $5 a month for that backstage pass, we will see you there um, to record the after show. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. I'm so excited for next week. Bye. <laughs>